Okay, hello everybody, welcome. Um, so let's let's wait uh, the class to to fill. Hi, Johan, you're here. You hear me? Yes. Okay, do you see me? Yes, we see okay. you, we hear you. Okay, fantastic. Uh, okay, let me... How we can make it bigger? Uh, So you can uh, you can share screen. Uh, okay. I have I allow that. Okay. Um, Fantastic. So one thing. Uh, I don't see myself, but I actually. Uh, now you, 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 I see you, I see myself too. I just wanted to make you bigger. Maybe when yeah. I stop sharing, that will happen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ah. Okay. Uh, so classes, uh, while students are, uh, are, are coming, I, I want to say uh, welcome, uh, Johan Kretan, for our uh, art economics course. I'm sure... Um, I'm sure for the first time uh, you are uh, uh, you are invited to, to such a course. Uh, so just uh, <laughs> just to tell you that this is an elective course uh, of Istanbul Big University Business uh, Faculty. There are uh, you know these students are from a business from economics department. And they take this course as elective course. However, there are some art management students who want to be artist, uh, you know, artist advisor or uh, gallerist or mm -hmm. uh, curator. Uh, so uh, this is the, uh, this is a, in, in, in fact, a multidisciplinary uh, course. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, so and we... I, uh, yeah. and I, I know you from uh, your Plemnili exhibition. Mm -hmm. In, in at the Dolap Dered 20, uh, 2018. It was a great exhibition. Thank you. So, uh, welcome, uh, welcome again. Uh, how is a lockdown in Paris? Uh, oh, we're, we're lucky. It's beautiful weather. It's good. wonderful weather. It's been, it's been a gorgeous moment for the last few days. And lockdown is difficult. Uh, I imagine it's difficult also for people in Istanbul or in Turkey, but for uh, here it's, it's not easy, but it makes us uh, invent new things and do new things. And so it's also a very productive time. Yeah, good, good. Okay, so as you know, I prepared a list of questions uh, for you. Uh, but we can deviate, we can add more uh, questions. Students may ask questions as well. Now, uh, if you are ready, I will start with my first question. Um, while studying art, uh, were you aware of the power of the art market? I mean, uh, you know, do artists worry, uh, worry about that or uh, this is, this is, beyond that uh, there's there when i because i asked to see your questions first so it's important for the people who listen to know that i've asked for some of the questions so i knew a little bit what we were going to talk about and so when you your first question says as an artist are you conscious of the art market i said i've got to tell a different story. And so I've, I've prepared, so now it's an experiment. I'm going to try, and so stay with me. 
We are, we are going with to you. to try and to get the images, yeah? Partager écran, okay. Let's see, and this one, and lecture. Okay, can you see me? Can you yes. see the images? Yes. Yes. So, so you said, as a artist, are you conscious of the art world and the art market? And I said, when are you conscious that you are an artist? So for me, it was when I was a little boy, I'm here in the foreground, I'm a little boy at my family's reunion in Belgium. And on the left-hand side of the table, you see a group of women. My grandmother is my mother, my sister, my great-grandfather at the end of the table. And um, I'm, a, I'm a shy little boy. And I like to be at the head of the table. And I like to be, um, I'm shy and, and sweet. And at school, I get bullied a lot. So at school, it's, it's, a, it's a rough environment, but I know that I'm different. And I know that I, I can draw. I know I can make things. And one of the anecdotes that I tell is that one of the bullies, one day one, he wants to hit me and I have made this little thing in, uh, you know, I don't remember if it was with bread or, or with some, some kind of leftovers. And I made this little thing and when he wanted to hit me, I said, oh, watch out. This thing tonight is going to come and haunt you in your dreams if you touch me. And the thing is that at that point, he somehow was so surprised that I turned into the artist. I turned into some, somebody who was like in the middle between a, somebody who could do something with his hands and invent, who could tell a story and who could also um, catch the attention. And so I think for me, it's important to say way before there's an art market, way before there's the conscience of the, the business, there was another, you know, another major event. And then my parents, I just, I, my sister sent me this picture yesterday. Uh, my, my mother taught history. My father was into uh, uh, insurance. Um, but they were always surrounded by books and surrounded also by uh, being very um, inquisitive about the world. So I think that to go back to your question about the art world, the um, I'm living in a small a city in Belgium and there is, we're in the seventies and there is this local old uh, prison and that prison has been turned into a, a museum. And here you see a picture of uh, the, the people constructing the museum. Uh, why do I say, why do I talk about a small local museum uh, called Hattoreke. It's because when I, when I came to Istanbul for the first time, I don't know what year that was, but when I came back, I came for one of the first biennales of Istanbul when I showed my work in the Yerepatan. And I found it interesting and wonderful how such an event uh, like the Biennale in Istanbul could change the world uh, in the same way as here in this Belgium town, the, the situation of a small museum 
could change somebody's life. I, did I lose you? No, no, I'm okay. here. So um, the, the thing is, there was a local museum, but there was also the event you asked the art world, when did it really start? It started when I was, I think, 11. I would go to a, a shop to buy paper and, and drawing paper. Uh, and I would, um, Maeva, Maeva, hello. Est-ce que tu peux enlever ta caméra? C'est pour le, okay, thank you. Uh, for, um, now I lost you. The, the thing is there was a, um, a local shop selling materials. And I would go to that shop every other day and buy a piece of paper or a, a, a pencil. And one day the owner said, young man, what do you do with that paper and that pencil? I showed my work and the guy said, I was 11. He said, next time there is a market, if you come and paint in front of my store, I will give you all the material for free. Ooh, so great. The first step into the art world was to paint in front of a store. And I sold things. I sold things to people who were coming to the market. Unbelievable. So the thing is that when you're 11 and you start selling your work and then somebody says, can you make a show in my uh, bar, in my cafe? Uh, and I said, sure, I'll hang my paintings in your cafe. Or that somebody would say, I've got a, a, a farm. Can you come and make a painting of my farm? And I would take my bicycle and I would go and make a painting of the farm. So we're a, a million miles away from somebody who is 18 and goes to art school. You are, um, there are lots of different ways to get into the art world. Exactly. And now we get to a very crucial moment because when I was painting in the streets, there was a couple of people called uh, Madame et Monsieur Léonard who were um, retired antique dealers. And they uh, said, ask your mother, ask your mother if you can come to our house after school. So every Wednesday for years to come, I would, uh, after school, go to their house and their house is here on the image. It's the house on the right. It's a house from 1636. And it was filled with art. A little bit, it looks a little bit, this is, this is an image of my own library downstairs, the other library. And, but it looks very strangely like their house. And the thing is that for, for years, I would go to their place and they were the beginning of my real connection with the art world in the sense that they would show me art when I went there. They would let me touch art it was not in the museum, it was something you could hold. And they would bring also, they, I could show my work and they would respond. There was a dialogue about my work. And the next thing was they also had clients for my work. Unbelievable. And how, how, how old are you at that time? I'm like, I think we're talking about 14. Unbelievable. 14 and then uh, we we kept in touch for a long long time even when I was in art school I always got uh, contacts with them oh I see so it's like um, 
they were uh, your first collectors in some sense. I think they're, they were some of the first collectors, indeed. They were some of the first collectors. And then the important thing I, I so they were one of the first collectors. They were also one of the first people, uh, apart from my parents, I could talk about with art because sometimes you're feeling very isolated when you're a young artist. Even if I, I was always part of a, a social group, like I explained with school. And then to go a little bit farther, then I went to art school. I, I first became a, a teacher, an art teacher, because my parents wanted me to have a real job. Yeah, I understand that. They said, you need, a, you need to be able to put food on the plate. And so I became a teacher in two years. And then I went to art school in Ghent, in, in Belgium, in Ghent. But because I was already a teacher, I could go in the class. I could jump classes. And in fact, I didn't use, lose any time. So um, I came to Ghent. And I just wanted to show you this man. I don't know if that rings a bell, Jan Hoot. Jan Hoot also, uh, he was a, a young director who, uh, of the Museum of uh, Contemporary Art in Ghent. And um, when he uh, became director, he started to invite the most important artists of his generation to Ghent. I mean, all the artists of the Arte Povera, Joseph mm -hmm. Boys, Kossuth, all the minimalists, everybody he would invite, Abramovich, all the artists would come to Ghent. And the city of Ghent was so shocked and so disgusted by the art he would show that they turned the budget of the museum to zero euros. But Jan Hood, he didn't really care. And he was so smart that he could continue to, uh, to make his museum work. And um, when I went to his funeral a few years ago, there were all these old ladies of Ghent at his funeral. And all these men and women who had hated what he had done in the 80s, mm. somehow are today, a lot of them, fans of contemporary art, lovers of contemporary architecture, know more about Arte Povera than you and me, because they were in the beginning so shocked and so uh, they couldn't believe what Jan was doing. But he changed uh, a cultural landscape. Uh, the first time I met him, um, uh, the, you see there's in the back of the picture, there's an artwork, I forget the name of the artist, but piece of the, the artwork is on the floor. Can you see it? Yes. Yes, there's a piece of it on the floor. So I went to the museum with my sister and I said to her, look, you've got to stand on the piece on the floor in the middle. And she stuck it on the piece and suddenly we hear a man shouting, Idiots, what are you doing? You are standing on a piece of art. This is impossible. So I, uh, I said to the man, I said, calm down. Uh, you have to stand on the piece to experience the piece in its glory. And he said, you don't know anything. And I said, you don't know anything. That's how it's supposed to be. 
And then uh, I said, but okay, we'll, we'll go away. And it's only afterwards that I understood that it was Jan Hoot. Oh, I see. It was the director of the museum. So my first, my first um, real discussion was with him uh, in the museum, except that there's something that I still have to add to this story that I now remember, is that in my art school, my teacher's school in Flanders, once every month, there was this strange man who would come and give a lecture about contemporary art. And most of the time, that lecture turned into a fight because the man would show minimal art and conceptual art, and he would do it in a school in the middle of nowhere. That man was the same man, it was Jan Hoot. Oh, so he was, not only was he a director of a museum, but he also was somebody who would go, it would be like going 300 kilometers from Istanbul to a little town to go and talk about contemporary art. If you would do that today in Istanbul, uh, in uh, Turkey, I imagine it would be a really difficult situation. Yes, yes. Like it was in the 80s in a different way in Belgium. Belgium is way, way smaller. So it's like it was maybe 150 kilometers from the museum, but he would drive there and he would come and talk. And so I remember that I had seen him and that I had had a shouting match with him at that point. Um, now, our story is getting very long. But, but it, is, it is nice to, to know and hear about all this, uh, to change a cultural landscape. It takes time and lots of effort. Uh, that's what you're, you're, you're telling us. It's very important. What I try to tell you is that it, uh, life changes with one person at a time. Yes. So uh, uh, I was a young artist from the beginning, but it was also because there were people who were very active. Jan Hoot, Le Leonard, uh, the, the, the shopkeeper who just respond to, um, you know, and, and uh, one person like Jan Hood can change a country. And so that's why afterwards he became also one of the directors of the Documenta. And so I think he, he's been uh, very important. But to get back to your uh, um, to your point, it's true that it takes a lot of time and that the changes in culture, because I'm talking now about something in the 80s and the art world today is a very different world. Okay, another question? Yeah. Yes, my questions continue. <laughs> 